Hello everyone, um, my name is Brandy Cochran and today um, to begin I wanted to um, welcome you to the lands of the Bunurong, Wundjeri and Wardrong people from where our university stands. They're the custodians of university land and have been for many centuries. We acknowledge the land on which we stand, that is me and Matt today, although we do have our own spaces as well, is the place of age-old ceremonies of celebration, initiation and renewal, and that the Kulin people's living culture has and had a unique role in the life of this region. The university supports the aim of Reconciliation Australia to build better relationships between the wider Australian communities and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples for the benefit of all Australians. I would also like to acknowledge the many First Nations peoples who have been affected by white colonial projects, including my father's tribe, the Umpqua people of the Umpqua River in Oregon. We also want to pay our respects to those amongst the gay, lesbian, trans and intersex communities who have worked to support the improved health and well-being of their peers, children, families, friends and country. We honor the elders in the diverse communities of which we are a part and we celebrate the extraordinary diversity of people's bodies, genders, sexuality and relationships that they represent. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. Um, as I said, my name is Dr. Brandy Cochran. Um, you'll be meeting Matt Cook in just a moment. Um, today we wanted to talk a little bit about um, what we've been thinking about is from the community app. So thinking a little bit about how do we create an e-learning module that, that comes from community rather than, um, you know, uh, just sort of um, being sort of pulled out of thin air as they sometimes feel like they might be. So, oh, here we go. I'm Brandy, you already bet me. Um, Matt will be speaking in the second half. Um, just wanted to, just in case you got us confused, I know we look a lot alike. So, you know, this, I'm Brandy, that's Matt. Um, uh, I'll be taking you through the first half of the presentation and then uh, Matt will be moving on through there. So our structure is gonna look a little like, um, I'm gonna talk about the context. Why are we creating this? You know, why do we think this is necessary? I wanna talk about the team that's been working on it. I want to talk about the support that we um, called in around this, as well as creating that content, the process we've been going through. And then I'm going to be passing um, on to Matt, who's going to talk a little bit about those processes, what that physically looks like. And then we'll move on to talking interview and sound bites, and then looking at what the build is currently looking, um, looking like, which is quite exciting um, that we're starting to see visuals um, bringing this together. Um, you know, as um, co-chairs of the Pride and Ally Network. Matt and I were really excited to, to get this started, to, to move forward on this kind of a project this year. And we were able to get started in November. And the fact that we've already got an initial build feels quite exciting, especially in a university environment. Um, here you can see a picture of some of the folks from Pri our Pride and Ally Network um, at VU, Victoria University. So the context. Why do we need, you know, community-led e-learning modules, right? Um, what I was finding as I was um, started at Victoria University is, is the um, quality of the e-learning modules at this particular university was about on par with what I'd seen everywhere else, which was not great, right? Um, it felt a bit tick box, a bit uh, so generalized that it, it lost all nuance. Um, and it kind of took out some of those complex issues that are actually so important um, for our community. As a background, Victoria University is one of the most diverse universities in all of Australia. Our students and staff represent over 90 different cultures and speak over 200 different languages. Um, anecdotally, as someone who teaches in the university, at least half my classes are people of color within the College of Law and Justice. Um, many of my students are first generations Australians who fall into the ESL. English as a second language category. This might vary, you know, across, um, you know, different courses and classes. But again, it is um, a very diverse uh, university. Um, and that means, of course, that our um, LGBTIQ plus um, community is also very diverse. It means that our staff and students are going to have a different experience of being part of a community than they might in other universities, such as Deakin or uh, Monash, where I taught in the past, that also did have you know, elements of diversity within that, but a very different kind of um, group at Victoria University. So we found that cookie cutter e-learning modules purchased from an NGO or sort of a tick box approach weren't really 
particularly appropriate for our university. It, it sort of ignores this experience of intersectionality um, that sort of fall away in that generic e-learning module. And they sort of fail to see beyond, you know, the challenges of white middle-class experience. Um, and so as we, we talked about this more in, in group, we, in, in Pride and Ally Network, we decided we wanted to do something different. So we found that the ones that were being used, um, for example, Pride and Diversity, which is a great Australian um, resource, the majority um, of their staff is white and cisgendered. Um, and, you know, that doesn't sit well from for the rest of us and for the diversity of the community that we have at, at Victoria University, not to throw anybody under the bus. It was just my intention to say, you know, I think it's, um, essential to reflect a variety of different experiences. And if you lead at your university, you can reflect what your university needs to know and what your students and staff need to know. Um, for many universities, obviously, this is going to be in the too hard basket um, for them to create their own modules. Um, as I was searching through um, the joys of um, many spaces of Google Scholar, attempting to look up more about e-learning modules from the community up, I struggled to find anything in the university setting. Also, many academic and staff members who are already overworked and underpaid, putting in volunteer time to create a, a module is not always possible um, as well. And we found this to be especially true at VU, where we're one of the lowest paid workers in the university system in Australia. How, however, we do love our university. Um, also, we're all a bit nuts, so we just decided to do it anyway. We just said, well, we need this. We want to combat the top-down approach to e-learning modules, and we decided to do something different. So we gathered together staff and students of different diverse um, sexualities and cultures to create a module that is built from the bottom up. So what does our team look like? It's kind of the next step. So not surprisingly, the first step is asking people to give up time for their project, uh, for this project. Um, from Matt and I as co-chairs of the Pride and Ally Network, we are pretty happy to just step up and facilitate and add to the discussions as we're both members of the queer community. We also received um, interest from several other members of the network that they'd be willing to volunteer their time. Um, we also then reached out to some students um, who had uh, different kinds of backgrounds um, as well to come on board. And we worked quite uh, closely, which I'll get into in a moment when I talk about support, um, to make sure that students were reimbursed with gift cards or a credit um, towards a particular VU program. So we wanted to make sure that students were reimbursed for their time because um, I think this is particularly important in these kinds of settings where students are often, um, you know, uh, put in a lot of time, um, but aren't always, it isn't always acknowledged for them. So there's about six of us, up between six and 10. You know, we had um, several people of color, including a person who's First Nation, a couple of trans folks, uh, two people who were intersex, and we covered all the LGB uh, boxes too. Um, so trying to really get a variety of different kinds of, of people involved. So it's not just, you know, me and Matt sitting down in our, you know, white middle-class way and, and making this up. We, we want, you know, we wanted something more complex than that. So support. Um, this is one thing that if you're looking at doing something like this, um, you know, well, we we're really lucky to be work quite closely with our diversity and inclusion department. So we had two staff members from there volunteer their time to help with administration, facilitation, and the brass tacks of the work. You know, um, they also were able to find some funding for us to be able to employ a member um, of the Polytechnic to be able to do the technical side of the build. Because if it was me making it, it'd look about as fancy as this um, presentation. <laughs> does tonight. So we needed help on that technical side, um, as well as sort of uh, getting help on administration and facilitation. So some basics here, you know, the things we thought about, we wanted the tech person to be to come in, in early stages, so they could explain what they needed to make the magic happen. Um, what is it they needed from us? And what did that need to look like so that we don't just kind of show up with a you know, a bunch of comments and then expect them to kind of figure it out. The other thing is that really importance of, of creating sharing space. I don't, I don't always use to like to use safe space uh, these days, but I think trying to create an in-person 
we're using Zoom, obviously, um, place for people to share and challenge and show emotions. And when you create that kind of space, people are willing um, to share and challenge others' ideas. And, and that richness is what is makes this makes these kinds of e learns so important. What do we want staff to know about our own experiences without, you know, say, just sharing our trauma stories so that people will connect with us, right? And, you know, I think the other thing I thought about was meeting often. So you want to make sure the team reflects the diversity in your uni, but you also want to make sure you're meeting on a regular basis. Um, and if you don't have anybody in your uni or nobody comes forward that wants to, that is a part of that particular community, you know, reach outwards as well to bring someone in. So the content. Um, in Australia, uh, we often call uh, sitting around telling stories as having a yarn. Um, so this is this is what we first what I first started thinking about when I wanted to create that circle of of care and trust, um, where everybody you know could feel they could share their own experiences, but also push back against uh, some of other other folks' ideas about what should be in there. So having a yarn means to have a chat, a discussion. It's generally really informal, often among friends, neighbors, and associates. So before we're trying to jump into formalizing things, we started out with discussions of what was important and why. Uh, we told stories, we talked about barriers and triumph, and as I said, it became a circle of care, especially in a time when we were all locked in our homes during COVID. Um, if you know, Melbourne um, was one of the most locked down, had the longest lockdown, um, and we were basically in lockdown almost two years. So the group actually became more things than just the makers of our e-learning module. Uh, it became a space where we could connect with other others in the community. One of the other important things I want to talk about here is there was no rush to concrete everything into an easily digestible chunk for university staff and students. I think when I first thought about it, I was like, oh, we'll get together for one session. We'll put it together. It's going to be great. But actually, it the more we were willing to go in depth, the more we were willing to challenge our own ideas and our own thoughts and what we actually wanted people to know that meant we were gonna to need to meet more often and, and do more things together. So at times that could feel sort of frustrating and we just wanted to come together, but those conversations of personal stories and challenges to other people's views have given us tremendous work to share. It's not just about sharing, as I said before, our trauma stories in exchange for understanding from um, the, rod, the wider university community, but it's also showing strength and pride in ourselves and our different experiences. So um, Matt's going to go ahead and give you um, a little bit of what this is going to look like. But I just wanted to say, you know, instead of just grazing the top and saying, this is what the letters of the alphabet mean, you know, um, you know, these sorts of things, like how do we complicate that more? So we wanted to question and complicate notions of gender, sex, and sexuality, rather than just trying to fit it into neat boxes for straight cis people to understand. Because we are more complex than that. You know, if we know anything about the queer community is is the boxes that come to us um, don't always feel right for us and that everything is is uh, a continuum is what I often like to talk about. Nothing's black and white, right? Everything's along those sides. We've given some practical tools um, about misgendering um, for staff and students um, so we can create you know, a gender inclusive environment. We challenge some of the notions of allyship as passive support, but rather an action. We also have specific sections on indigenous perspectives and acknowledge the gender, sex, sexuality is different across cultures, right? We don't need to keep using these, these same colonial boxes that have been handed down to us. There's actually so much more than that. The Western ideation of neat boxes and categories shouldn't actually be the understanding for any of our lived experiences. So how do we create an e-learning module that reflects that? Well, as I said, it takes a lot of time and work. I'm going to pass you over now uh, to Matt. We'll be doing the next section. Thanks. Thanks, Brandy. And hi, everyone. Um, just before I get started, I'd just like to pay my respect to the past, present and future traditional custodians and elders of this nation and the continuation of cultural, spiritual and educational practices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. I'm coming you tonight, to you tonight at quarter past 10 Australian time from Brunswick East in Melbourne, uh, Australia, which is on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll get started really quickly into this. Um, I work um, in the Polytechnic 
area at the university, which is our vocational and um, applied uh, trades schools, health science, um, community services, English as second language, those those sorts of those sorts of um, courses. I'm the general manager of course development and design, um, as well as the co-chair of the Pride and Ally Network. Interestingly, I sit across the product development area of the Polytechnic, which is going to be working on the, 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 visual, the visual outcomes that we have as a result of this, this ongoing and iterative process. So what we're presenting tonight or this morning is more a direction or part of the story that hopefully we will have more information about once we get to the, to the, to the end stages. Um, so I just want to sort of cast a, a design lens over the process that we're working on at the moment. And, and, you know, a lot of what Brandy has touched on is really much about that design development phase and just getting the content right that we want to, that we want to share through, through this, um, this, this module that we're in the process of developing and ensuring that we get as many different voices involved in the conversation as we possibly can get. Um, there's a lot of words on this on this slide at the moment, but really what 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 this shows you is is that conversational narrative that we had as we developed uh, the content. So um, we have the, the, the overall module, which is which which has a direction towards students and staff, and then there's um, content that's available for both students and staff. So just to give you a rough idea, as we were going through the ideation process, anything in yellow is for staff. Anything in blue is for students and anything is white will go into both student and staff facing presentations. In addition to that, um, there was a lot of extensive feedback and conversation. And you can see some of that on the side of these, these screenshots that just show that we were having ongoing, regular and very, very robust conversations about what this content might look like. Um, the, the, the scaffold and structure was, ve was very clear, but I think what we've done through this process is given it a real Victoria University flavour that's idiosyncratic to, to the West of Melbourne. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping that we start to reflect that in the look and feel of the module moving forward. Um, Brandy, can you wave your magic wand, please? Thank you. Oh, awesome. Um, so we're in the process now of um, uh, starting to develop some uh, interviews and sound bites. Um, Part of the, the issue we've had with COVID is, is really the inability of us to be able to get together as a group and, to, and to, to, to meet staff or to do video recordings of staff who have lived experience or who have um, shared experience that they want to, they, they, feel, they, comf they feel comfortable discussing or, or free to discuss in, in that kind of environment. Um, and so what we really want to do is to use those, those conversations and those examples of lived and shared experience to really illustrate the, the learning that we're building into the module. Um, so I think uh, starting in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing um, video recordings of, of um, staff and students who are wanting to talk about their experiences. And that will then embellish the narrative that we're hoping to, to resolve and to finalise um, in the module itself. Um, next slide, thank you. In addition to that, um, the product development team that I manage as part of my portfolio uh, will be working on the, the, the digital interaction, uh, the student and staff interaction, um, the color palette, the look and feel, you know, all of the, the, the design development phase of the actual module itself. So this is very, very early stages, um, but this is, this is, and no one else has, has seen this yet. So this is like a world first for us, so hooray. Um, but this is the first page of the, the, the um, LGBTQIA um, plus awareness module. Um, and what we are in the process of doing is really just starting to resolve what those, the elements of that module are going to be. Um, and then uh, seeking feedback from the, the working group to ensure that, you know, it, it's, it's interactive for staff and for students. Um, and it also works both on a traditional computer and a mobile device. So this is, this is obviously going to go through some stages before we get on, we settle on a final look and feel. But this is just to really give you an idea. What we're trying to do now is to just really drag that sort of, that sort of professional development module or student experience module into 2022 and just make it really relevant for, for, um, for online interaction. 
Um, next slide, thank you. No, as, as we say on the slide, it's current but not dated. Um, and um, you'll see from the, the, the additional information, uh, we are working very closely with um, the design team in product development to ensure that, that whatever we create um, for, for the students to interact with on our learning system, learning management system, which is called um, uh, VU Collaborate, uh, will be accessible for both staff and for students. Um, and you know, there's a lot of experimentation going on at the moment with how we how we utilise colour in a way that that really expands um, the way we've used colour in this kind of this kind of um, this kind of presentation in the past. We're not adhering very closely to to the familiarity of the pride flag or trans awareness. We're, what we're trying to do is really just break that barrier and say this is this is training or it's or or, or, or access to experience that's available for everyone. Um, so these these examples that I'm showing you now, we've got the landing page of the module. Um, then we've got a really you know really rough idea of what we think we're going to be working on with the mod, the, the mobile interaction, um, and then the learning that we put into um, into the actual module itself. Don't read the text on that one because it won't make any sense. Um, but really, that just gives you a sense of where we'll be putting. That, 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 that text and, um, and what we generally tend to do in our product development team is we build video, um, interactivity, um, short quizzes, you know, all of those sorts of really, really um, innovative um, online teaching and learning methodologies into um, the module um, moving forward. Um, and that's, that's really where we're at in terms of our, in terms of our design development phase. 